to come back to the same topic we are on the idea of dynamic performance of diodes we had earlier seen the steady state performance of diode as a switch those were the on state performance voltage drop off state performance leakage current and so on power losses associated with and so on now we are looking at the dynamic performance the dynamic performance relates to the switching performance what happens during the transients when a diode from a conducting state moves to a blocking state unlike uh, other switches the electronic switches have a different mechanism in the process of moving from an on state to an off state the blocking in most of these semiconductor junctions are taking place because of charge concentrations so whenever a diode moves from an on state to an off state there is a redistribution of charge in the junction and that is what you see here you see here as qrr this is called the reverse recovery charge and this charge is accumulated in the junction over a period of time which is given as trr or the reverse recovery time and during this time the device for a short duration conducts in the opposite direction in the direction which is against the arrow mark in the diode and this is a non ideality in the diode an ideal diode will switch off and remain in the off state no current will ever flow in the opposite direction but in a real device there is a small duration when the current flows in the opposite direction charges recover and a fresh balance is established which carries out the new state which is the off state this was the on state and off state and this is the intermediate transient during this transient time which is the reverse recovery time the device is still conducting partially and so when you try to use these diodes at very high frequencies it is necessary to make sure that this high frequency is manageable uh, through this reverse recovery time as well so what we see here is the data sheet of a particular hyperfast dual diode these are packed two diodes in one package with k which is the mid point and two anodes anode 1 anode 2 you can connect them together and use it as a single diode or you can connect it as a center tapped rectification application and so on the metal here is the same as the cathode the middle uh, tag and you will have two anodes in this particular device and you can see a single line specification of the device which is a 30 amperes 1200 volts hyper fast dual diode this is capable of carrying 30 amperes blocking 1200 volts and it is a fast diode fast diodes have the additional recovery time specified which is 65 nanoseconds in this case operating temperature is limited to 175 degrees and the reverse voltage for this device is 1200 volts and the applications are specified the process of recovery is something which is of interest to us and you can see here the reverse recovery time is specified as 65 nanoseconds maximum and this is when it is recovering from 1 ampere when it is recovering from 30 amperes it is 75 nanoseconds so you see that this reverse recovery time is not really a function of current it is almost constant it is nearly 70 nanoseconds whether you are recovering from 1 ampere forward current or you are recovering from 30 amperes forward current so going through a data sheet will be always advantages it will tell us many of these functional dependencies you can see very clearly that the diode recovery is independent almost independent of the current from which it is recovering and it is necessary to have a defined rate of change of current during the recovery process and the recovery consists of two different durations known as ta and tb which is what we see here as the first half this 
reverse recovery consists of an early recovery part where the current monotonically keeps changing in one direction and then this is where the junction really starts to recover and the recovery is complete here. So, the start of recovery is the first part of the time and then completion of recovery is the second part of the time and the charge collected during that process is the reverse recovery uh, charge. You can see that the time A is about 48 nanoseconds and time B is about 22 nanoseconds and you can see here is A and B are the two times that are designated here. This particular diode is uh, specified as a soft recovery diode so that this recovery current the slope changes smoothly. There are some diodes where the slope change is very abrupt they are called hard recovery diodes. This is a soft recovery diode. If we go on to the next type of switches these are the fully controlled switches. We had seen the diodes as uncontrolled switches, the SCRs as semi controlled switches which has control only in one direction. Now, the first real switch belonging to the family of fully controlled switch is the bipolar junction transistor. This is the same as the junction transistor which is capable of operating for higher voltages and higher currents. It has three terminals the collector at the top, the emitter at this point, collector and emitter are the power terminals and the base which is a control terminal and emitter. Base and emitter form the control pair of terminals and emitter and collector form the power pair of terminals. And this device operation can be best understood by the characteristics that you see here. The operation of this device is given in the voltage current plane for different voltages what is the kind of current that can flow in the device for various base currents. Base current is a parameter for which this is drawn when there is no base current supplied the device has a voltage characteristics which is very close to the voltage axis a characteristics which is very close to the voltage axis. The current through the device is very small the voltage blocking is very large this is very typical of an off state switch. At the other extreme when the gate current is very large, uh, it is very large in relation to the required current for the collector to emitter that is this end of the operating point. In such a state you will find the device can carry a very large amount of current with a very small voltage drop. The V i characteristics are very close to the current axis and this is very typical of an on state switch and in between you have the red colored characteristics which are the active state of the switch. When a transistor is used as an amplifier normally this is the region in which operation is done and the base current is amplified in the collector and the collector resistance will provide a voltage. In a typical amplifier this is the region in which the transistor will be operated. The voltage across the device and current through the device will be quite large and so there will be a large amount of power dissipation in the device. But in uh, opposition to that kind of operation in switched mode power conversion or in power converters whenever we see a uh, bipolar junction transistor it is used in the form of a switch. It has two states which is the off state and the on state. Off state is when base drive is completely cut off, on state is when base drive is maximum. So, the device in the on state will have a small voltage drop and large current passing and device in the off state will have a small leakage current blocking a large voltage. And in the on state the BJT switch takes current only in the positive direction and similarly in the off state the BJT switch can block voltage only in the positive direction. So, we might say that this is also a single quadrant switch it can block voltages only in one direction positive and it can pass current only in one direction which is positive and effectively this is a single quadrant switch. The important difference is that 
this single quadrant switch if you provide base current it will become on if you do not provide base current it becomes off so it is capable of being controlled both in the on state and in the off state and it is a fully controlled switch unlike a diode which is an uncontrolled switch a transistor a thyristor which is semi controlled switch a transistor is a fully controlled switch another important uh, feature is that these characteristics the active states are moving from the off state to the on state is characterized by a large supply of current in the base emitter circuit so the device is turned on by supplying a large current in the base to emitter so this is a current controlled switch so in the power conversion uh, terminology a bjt can also be referred to these features as being a single quadrant switch being a fully controlled switch and being a current controlled switch the data sheets of a bjt again is a storehouse of a lot of information we will be able to see those details just now when the device is operating in the on state it has a collector to emitter voltage which is uh, specified as vce saturation that is the device has full base current so that it is in saturation in saturation state the collector emitter voltage drop is very small and it can support a very large amount of collector current this is given as in this particular device 1.5 volts at a collector current of 10 amperes and to keep this 10 amperes on in the saturation level the base current required is 2 amperes in this particular case many of these features are seen from the data sheet if we can see the data sheet of a device which is uh, specified as bux48 and bux48a these are uh, power transistors which were very popular nearly 20 to 30 years back <coughs> they are rated for you can see that the single line specification says 400 and 450 volts for 48 and 48a and the current can be 15 amperes on the collector and it is an npn transistor silicon transistor capable of operating with large power and the dissipation can be as much as 175 watts this relates to the capability of the package to handle power the applications are given as switching regulators inverters drivers motor controls deflection circuits in tv uh, fast turn off timers and so on several applications are given let's look at some of the important uh, characteristics here so what you will see at this point is one of the uh, important characteristics which is the on state voltage for example there are characteristics which are given here as off characteristics which for this particular uh, blocking voltage the Uh, collector current is as much as uh, yeah collector cutoff current is about 2 milliamperes collector cutoff current with uh, uh, emitter open circuit yeah, emitter cutoff current 0.1 milliampere this icer is the kind of current that flows in the device when the Uh, base and emitter are terminated with a resistance of 10 ohm this is one of the important uh, uh, specification for us many times when we want to keep the device off we will simply terminate with a resistor between base and emitter recommended by this number in which case with uh, rated voltage across the collector to emitter the device will have a leakage current of 3 milliamperes that's what we see here but if you can supply a negative bias to the base during the same condition this current can be brought down further okay this is about the off state characteristics let us see if we have any on state characteristics which is the next box that you see here see this tells you for the device which is bux48 
the saturation voltage is 1.5 volts between collector and emitter for a condition corresponding to 10 amperes of collector current and 2 amperes of base current. In order to pass 10 amperes in the collector, you need a base current of 2 amperes. Then under that condition, the collector voltage is limited to 1.5. If you go to the full current, the rated current of the device which is almost 16 amperes, 15 amperes, you will find the voltage drop is quite large. At 15 amperes, the base current will be 3 amperes and the saturation voltage is 5 volts here. Now, this is an indication, normally this is an indication of how much base drive one has to provide in order to keep it as a satisfactory on switch. Okay. There are a number of other uh, uh, dynamic performance characteristics for which we will see a little later. The thermal resistance is 1 degree centigrade per watt. This is an important specification because this will tell us how much power that can be successfully uh, taken out from the device so that it can operate at the uh, at the power level at which uh, it has been specified. It is given here that it can work up to a dissipating power level of 175 watts if the case is at 25 degrees, 100 watts if the case is at 100 degrees and so on. And the operating and storage junction temperature range is up to 200 degrees. It is possible to go to a peak junction temperature of 200 degrees centigrade and still have the uh, device functioning satisfactorily. I had put here some of the essential numbers like the thermal resistance 1 degree centigrade per watt, the uh, leakage current which is 2 milliamperes saturation voltage which is 1.5 volts at 10 amperes with a base drive of 2 amperes. So, these operating points could be uh, somewhere here 10 amperes current with 1.5 volts and uh, 400 volts and uh, 2 milliamperes. So, some of these on state and off state and we never operate a switch in its active region mainly because the power dissipation in the active region is very large. The next in the family of fully controlled switch is the MOSFET uh, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. The characteristics are very similar with one addition. The device has a built in diode which is in the opposite polarity. So, this diode can conduct current in the negative direction. Any current in the negative direction this from source to drain will pass through the diode which is this part and any current which is drained to source is this section provided gate is adequately positively biased and if the gate is not adequately positively biased, the device will be in the cutoff region which is the off state and if this is in the active region, then you could have operating points somewhere here. So, as, as uh, power conversion or switched mode power conversion applications our operating points will be limited to the on state, off state and then the reverse conducting state. A MOSFET has three states, on state which is when current is flowing from D to S and the gate is given a voltage which is positive with respect to source. Then the reverse conducting state when the external current is flowing from source to drain, no control action is taking place in the device. Then the forward blocking state is when the gate is either at the same potential as the source or gate is at a negative potential with respect to the source in which case no current flows through the device and the device can block large positive voltages. So, it is an on switch for i greater than 0 as well as i less than 0. Off switch it can be used for v greater than 0. So, you see that it can block and pass currents which are block currents in positive and negative direction, block voltage only in positive direction. So, this switch is a two quadrant switch and it is a fully controlled switch. You can move from on state to off state, off state to on state, on state to off state by controlling the bias that is given to the gate with reference to the source. The gate and the source form the control terminal pair 
and the source and the drain from the power terminal pair. And this is a voltage controlled switch unlike a bipolar junction transistor, a MOSFET field effect transistor turns on or off depending on the voltage of the gate with respect to the source. So, in effect we identify a MOSFET with these features. It is a two quadrant switch, two quadrant because the current can be in both positive and negative directions and voltage is only in one direction and it is a fully controlled switch because through the gate you can make it on or off. Voltage controlled switch because the control function is achieved by keeping the gate at a voltage with respect to the source. The MOSFET characteristics as we had seen here and the essential characteristics which are specified here as RDS on in the on state unlike a uh, BJT a bipolar junction transistor in the on state has a saturation voltage drop V c is set, but a MOSFET in the on state behaves just like a resistor. So, it is specified as on state resistance in this particular device we will see the data sheet in a moment. The on state resistance is 0.05 ohm when it is carrying a current of 16 amperes and when the gate is biased 10 volts with reference to the source when VGS is 10 volts positive and when the drain is carrying a current of 16 amperes the RDS on or the on state resistance of this device is 0 0.05 ohm and the device has the same uh, kind of thermal resistance junction to case which is given in degree centigrade per watt which is useful to design the heat dissipation mechanism or heat management uh, mechanism. The leakage current is about 250 microamperes. Let us look at the data sheet of this device. This is made by a manufacturer international rectifier IRF540 is the name of this device and this is a n channel uh, MOSFET and the single uh, line spec on this is 100 volts 0 0.52 ohm resistance on state and a current of 27 amperes, drain current of 27 amperes. So, it is capable of conducting up to 27 amperes of current blocking up to 100 volts of voltage with an on state resistance of 0 0.052 ohms when it is kept on. Now, many of the uh, data as we see here will be quite uh, helpful. For example, at a junction a temperature of 25 degrees this device can successfully carry 27 amperes when the VGS gate to source is kept at a bias voltage of 10 volts. At a case temperature of 100 degrees at a case temperature of 100 degrees centigrade the same device under the same operating condition can carry a current of only 19 amperes. This is because as the temperature goes higher the RDS on increases and because of that dissipation in the device goes up. Now, the device can normally used for pulsed current. This is another positive advantage that because uh, it has a large pulse current rating nearly 4 times the pulse, 4 times the maximum continuous current rating. In comparison with BJT, a MOSFET is even more rugged. It is capable of carrying pulse currents which are almost 4 times more than the uh, uh, rated continuous drain current. The gate to source voltage, this is the control voltage one which one should uh, understand and apply can be up to a maximum of plus 20 volts or minus 20 volts. This is something which when exceeded will result in damage to the gate. So, normally the recommended numbers will be about 12 volts plus to keep the device on and about 12 volts minus to keep the device off. Many of these uh, specifications can be seen in the data sheet at uh, different points. And you see from here that the junction can go up to a maximum operating temperature of 175 degree centigrade. You will see that this number for BJT could be around uh, 150 degrees, for diodes it could be 200 degrees 
for MOSFETs it could be 150 or 175 degrees and so on. Then many data sheets will tell what is the minimum temperature up to which this can be successfully used and maximum temperature up to which it can be successfully used. The thermal resistance is R theta junction to case is specified as 1.6 degree centigrade per watt. There are a few other numbers given here junction to case, case to heat sink, junction to ambient. If you do not use any heat sink, then the thermal resistance of junction to ambient you can see is 62 degree centigrade per watt. So, if you simply dissipate about 2 watts, this will have a temperature rise of about 125 degrees. So, you can see that even though this device is capable of dissipating 94 watts when it is properly designed with a heat sink. Without heat sink, it cannot even dissipate 2 watts. See the difference. About 100 watts you can dissipate if you have a proper heat management uh, circuit or a heat sink and without heat sink, it cannot even dissipate 2 watts. This is something which one should be uh, careful about because even when you are building circuits and testing them. Testing them without heat sink has this great penalty. The power dissipation is not even 2 percent of the power dissipation when it is with a heat sink. So, many times we will lose a device because the heat sink is not connected and even at a very small just 2 percent of power level, the device reaches large junction temperatures and gets damaged. This is something one has to be careful about. Now, if we go to the uh, rest of the specification, you see here R D S on. This is an important specification which tells you what is on state resistance when V G S is so much and when I D S. Now, this is at a junction temperature of 25 degrees when nothing is specified 25 degrees applies. And you can see that the same data sheet will also give another important uh, spec which is the dependence of RDS on on the junction temperature. RDS on drain to source on state resistance normalized with respect to junction temperature. So, what you see here is at 25 degree centigrade, whatever is the RDS on given is ok, the multiplying factor is 1. But if you go to 125 degrees junction temperature, the multiplying factor is almost 2. That means, this device if the junction is operating at 125 degrees, we will have an on state resistance of almost double this number. Instead of 0 0.052, it will have 0 0.1 ohm. This is something which one has to keep in mind. Many of the other numbers, important uh, steady state numbers are given and uh, the third in the family of uh, fully controlled switch is the IGBT insulated gate bipolar transistor. This device is really a hybrid of MOSFET and a BJT. The power circuit is very similar to a BJT and the control end is very similar to a MOSFET. So, it is termed the terminals are marked as collector and emitter on the power side and gate on the control side. This gate and emitter form the control terminal pair and collector and emitter form the power terminal pair and like a MOSFET this also has a, a diode anti parallel diode which will make the current flow both in positive and negative direction and if you do not provide enough bias for the gate the device will be off and this is the off state. So, the device can carry current both in positive and negative if it is correctly biased and if it will be in the off state with positive voltage across the device when the gate is at negative voltage with respect to the emitter. So, just like a MOSFET this is also a two quadrant switch. It has two quadrants of operation because current can be both plus and minus voltage is only plus. So, effectively it is a two quadrant switch. It is a fully controlled switch because by controlling the gate voltage with, refer with reference to the emitter it is possible to keep it on or off. So, you can move from on state to off state, off state to 
on state by changing the voltage on the gate. It is fully controlled and the control feature is by the voltage on the gate with reference to the emitter and so this is also a voltage controlled switch. IGBT has because the power circuit is very similar to a BJT has a VCE SAT or a saturation collector emitter voltage for a given current with a given gate to emitter bias voltage. Uh, many times MOSFETs are devices which are preferred for lower voltage up to 60 volts or 100 volts and IGBTs are preferred devices for higher voltage 600 volts or above. Of course, there are MOSFETs available even up to 800 volts or 1000 volts, but preferably MOSFETs are used in low voltage high current uh, circuits and IGBTs are preferred in high voltage uh, low current as well as high current devices. Some of the key specifications that you see here are saturation voltage, on state current, uh, control voltage, thermal uh, resistance and off state current which is a leakage current. From the data sheets one can see all these uh, characteristics. This is a 30 ampere 1200 volts N channel IGBT device. The symbol is very similar to a BJT on the power side and a MOSFET on the control side. Gate to emitter is the control pair, collector to emitter is the power pair. The This particular device is rated up to 1200 volts and a current of 50 amperes and the thermal resistance is 1.67 or uh, power dissipation, thermal resistance will be at the probably bottom degree C per watt. Let us see where it is. Yeah, this is the thermal resistance 0 0.6 degree centigrade per watt. Normally, when you are reading a uh, data sheet, it is good to read from the dimensions the important things so that you will be able to zero in on where what is given. Okay. The on state voltage and the off state current are important uh, specifications. Let us see where those are given. Uh, for example, the, the leakage current is about 4 milliamperes at 80 percent of the rated voltage at a case temperature of 125 degrees. That is what this line is specifying. Then the VC is sat or the on state voltage, the maximum voltage is 3.5 to 3.8 for a current rating of IC 90. That is when the case is at 90 degrees, whatever is the current rating with the gate emitter voltage 15 or gate emitter voltage 10. So, when the gate emitter is biased at a layer, lower voltage, you can see that the uh, saturation voltage is higher indicating that the power dissipation is more in the device. The product of the on state voltage and on state current will be the power dissipation and that has to be accounted for in the thermal design of the switch. Now, let us see some compound switches. We have already seen uncontrolled switches, semi-controlled switches and fully controlled switches, but all these were either single quadrant or two quadrant switches. It is possible to connect two SCRs back to back so that the specification now or the VI characteristics now covers the entire uh, four quadrants. You can pass current in positive and negative direction and you can block voltage positive and negative voltages. So, this device uh, two thyristors connected back to back across two terminals anti parallel SCRs they are referred to as anti parallel connected SCRs is a four quadrant switch. It is again a semi controlled switch you can only turn on the device you will not be able to turn off unless the current goes to 0 the device will not turn off and it is a pulse triggered switch. There is no need to continuously keep it on a pulse to the gate is enough to turn on the device. This is another compound switch which is a four quadrant switch fully controlled voltage controlled switch anti parallel MOSFETs or IGBTs. Now, both MOSFETs or IGBTs can be used in this. 
you can see that two devices are now connected in series unlike the thyristors which two were connected in parallel to form a compound switch here two devices are connected in series to form a compound switch the current can when the device on the right hand side is on current can flow through this in the uh, from right to left and when the left hand side device is on current can flow from left to right so it is possible to support current both in positive and in negative direction and similarly it is possible to support block the voltage both in positive and negative direction by selectively turning on or turning off these two controlled devices so this is a compound switch it is equivalent to an ideal switch which can conduct current both in positive and negative direction block voltages both in positive and negative voltages the non ideal uh, feature of this switch is that you will have voltage drops while current is flowing and uh, when voltage is blocked there will be some leakage but as i said before the leakage performance is very close to the ideal you will find that blocking currents are almost zero the on state voltages will be probably a fraction of 1% or so half a percent or even less the uh, blocking loss will be even smaller okay now we come to the next uh, uh, set of characteristics for the switches which are the dynamic characteristics see whenever you have a controlled switch a fully controlled switch we know that the switch can be turned on or turned off through the control terminals for example this mosfet can be turned on by charging the gate or by discharging the gate so if you see this blue line here which is a control voltage that is the charge that we give to the gate if this blue line represents the gate voltage then it is possible to identify what are the performance features of a mosfet switch when it comes to switching performance so these are switching characteristics of a controlled switch you will notice that whenever a switch is on the voltage across that has to be zero but here this is the time when the switch is off vc is zero and the voltage device is blocking the voltage decided by the circuit voltage but as soon as you have given a command to turn on the device for some duration nothing happens and this is called the delay time during the delay time the device does nothing internally something happens and after that the voltage drops from the blocking state to the conduction state almost linearly in a time known as rise time and we call that as the rise time the turn on of the device has two components a delay time when nothing happens after the command is given and then a rise time when the voltage linearly drops to zero so we call these times as td delay time and tr rise time in time tr the switch voltage drops linearly to zero the control switch in the turn off characteristics also indicates a very similar uh, performance feature this is the instant when we decide that the device will be switched off there is a delay time when nothing happens the current continues to flow in the device and then there is a duration when the current linearly drops to zero in the off state the device current has to be zero in the on state device current is decided by the external circuit so this movement of passing current to zero current takes place in a time known as fault time and that time follows the delay time so from the time command is given to switch off the device nothing happens during the delay time which is known as td turn off delay time and after that during the fault time tf the current drops down to zero this is one of the models for the switching characteristics of most of the controlled switches whether it is a mosfet or an igbt or a bjt all of them exhibit a delay time and a switching time switching time is the fall time in the case of switch off rise time in the case of switch on if we switch a resistive load with a controlled switch you can see that after the command is given for a delay time nothing happens 
after that as the voltage drops the load current increases and this drop in voltage and rise in current are almost synchronized because the load is purely resistive it does not have any dynamic characteristics so the device dynamic characteristics is just simply carried on to the load as the voltage is dropping the current is rising and this is the turn on performance of a resistive load a mosfet under resistive load so during the rise time the voltage of the device drops and the current during that time rises the turn off characteristics also is very similar but the time now is called the fall time during the fall time current falls linearly to zero and the voltage across the device rises linearly to the full voltage now in the case of resistive load this drop in the current and the rise in the voltage whether it is turn off or drop in the voltage and rise in the current in the case of turn on both are straight lines it's a very simple model and for resistive load this is true but in general if the load is not resistive the turn on characteristic only one part is defined by the switch that is the drop in voltage to zero in rise time is defined by the switch similarly in the turn off drop in current during the fall time from the full current to zero current in tf linearly is defined but how the current will rise how the voltage will rise during turn off how the current will rise during turn on is really load dependent is dependent on the external circuit if the external circuit is resistive this also will follow a straight line which we had seen before but if the external circuit is not resistive it will be something different we will see it in a moment okay now let us see the dynamic characteristics of the mosfet as it is given in the data sheet you can see that these four here td on tr td off tf are the times that i had mentioned you can see for this device when the switching is done at 50 volts for a current of 16 amperes with a gate resistance of 5.1 ohm with a drain resistance of 3 ohm in order to control the current 50 volts by 3 is roughly 16 amperes so with this kind of load and control characteristics the turn on delay time is 8 nanoseconds 8.2 nanoseconds turn off delay time is 44 nanoseconds this is again very typical the device delay time during turn on is always very much smaller than the delay during turn off the turn on delay time will be normally a small fraction of the turn off delay time but during the delay time as we had seen no change in voltage or current is taking place so that is not really very important except for the delay that is introduced there is no power dissipation during that time the rise time and fall time are nearly equal whether you are moving from on to off or off to on 39 nanosecond and 33 nanoseconds are nearly equal this also will be very typical in most switches that rise time and fall time are of the same orders of magnitude but the delay time on delay time normally will be very small compared to off delay time there are many other things which we will come to know as we start designing uh, systems later on in the applications part of this but this kind of an on state delay time rise time off state delay time fall time these are all things one should keep in mind when we are trying to use it for higher and higher switching frequencies i was mentioning that the current rise during on and voltage rise during off is decided by the external circuit so let us see how this external circuit determines these characteristics and whether it is good or bad now when you are turning on a capacitive kind of circuit because the voltage across the device falls linearly you know that the capacitive current is c times dv by dt so this linear drop in voltage will give rise to an additional current of c times dv by dt c times full voltage divided by full time 
So, C V by T R will be the additional current in the switch apart from the load current. If it was a resistive load, it will jump to load current and stop here. If it is a capacitive load of value C, then it is possible that the current switched on is much higher than the load current. So, turn on of capacitive load results in over current during turn on. This is something important to know. The counterpart of that is whenever you turn off an inductive load, you know that in an inductance if the current is changed with a rate of change of current, the voltage across the inductor will be L d i by d t. So, if we have a load which is inductive, the voltage across that inductive part of the load will be L into d i by d t which is i divided by t, i by t f. So, this is the additional voltage which will come across the device other than the circuit voltage. So, you can say that turn off of an inductive load results in over voltage. The turn on of a capacitive load results in over current. These are dual properties. So, whenever a device is being turned off, inductive load is more uh, hazardous and whenever a device is being turned on, capacitive load is more hazardous. The other side of that is if you are turning on an inductive load, it is always better because the inductance will not allow the current to rise very fast. So, turning on an inductive load is less hazardous compared to turning on a capacitive load and similarly, turning off an inductive load is less hazardous compared to turning off an inductive load. So, in general, we would prefer the load to have inductive characteristics during turn on and capacitive characteristics during turn off. In general, this is not really possible. Most loads will have either a nature of an inductance or resistance or capacitance. So, if you really wish to have this preferred load characteristics, it is necessary to add additional circuits to the switch which are known as switching aid circuits and these circuits are also called as snubber circuits and they are capable of exploiting this feature. They will add components in the circuit in such a way that during the small turn on period or during the small turn off period, the circuit will behave as if it is either an inductance or a capacitance and that helps in making sure that there are no over currents during turn on and there are no over voltages during turn off. So, what you see here is a typical switching aid circuit. The switch that is used is shown here. There is a red color circuit elements which are the additional elements used to help the turn on process and the blue color elements that you see here. These elements are used to make the circuit help the turn off process. Just as we were mentioning, the turn off process, if the load is capacitive, that is advantageous. Turn on process, if the load is inductive, it is advantageous. So, what is being done here is in series with the switch and inductance is put, so that whenever the switch is turned on, current has to race through this inductance. So, for a short duration, the circuit behaves like an inductance helping the process of turning on. In the same way when the device is switching off, a capacitor is coming across the device. So, that ensures that the voltage across the device will rise slowly and that will ensure that the device turn off is like a capacitive load, the preferred kind of load. The strategy for reducing this switching stress is by making the circuit behave like an inductor during turn on and a capacitor during turn off. But then the flip side of this is that this inductor which is good for turn on will become bad, bad for turn off because if you turn off the current in an inductor, you will have an L d i by d t over voltage induced. Similarly, if you turn on this switch, this C will dump all its energy into the uh, switch and give rise to a large over current. So, to overcome that, we have additional elements here. When the switch is turned on, turned off, the current in the inductor will be freewheeling through this circuit. So, there is a path for this current to flow. So, that will ensure that the current in the inductor is not interrupted. So, there will be no over voltage because of the 
inductor which help the turn on process. In the same way when this device is turned on, the capacitor cannot discharge through this diode because of the opposite polarity. It will discharge through this R f. So, that that will ensure that the capacitive energy is dumped into this through a limited current limited by this R f. So, what we see here is a switching eight circuit L naught for helping the turn on process C f for helping the turn off process, but the bad effects of L naught during the turn off process is overcome by providing a freewheeling path for the inductor and similarly the bad effect of the capacitor during turn on is provided by a polarized resistor. This resistor will ensure that when the capacitor is discharging into the switch, it has to do it through R f. L naught, R naught, D naught are the on state uh, helping circuit or turn on eight circuit, L f, R f, D f are the turn off eight circuit. So, this kind of uh, additional circuit ensures that whenever the device is turning on, the current rises slowly and then reaches the full current. Similarly, when the device is turning off, the current drops linearly, but the voltage rises slowly and eventually reaches the full voltage. So, this type of switching aid networks are popular whenever you wish to reduce the switching over voltage and over current stress. The other fully controlled switches can be seen from the data sheet. I think we have already seen these data sheets, a BJT, a MOSFET and an IGBT. So, let us see some sample design. This is a network which is used for a switch 400 volts 15 amperes, switching time is 400 nanoseconds. In this case, if you do not use any switching circuit, the apparent loss will be 400 volts 15 amperes 400 nanoseconds that is about 2.4 millijoule. This is the apparent switching loss, full voltage and full current for a small duration of 0.4. This is the order of switching loss. But when we use this turn on kind of a snubber, when this voltage is dropping, we limit this rise in the current by providing this L naught. You can see that the additional voltage here, see this is the device voltage, supply voltage is 400. The difference between supply voltage and the device voltage is this block, this triangular block that area is the volt second across the inductor, that area divided by L will give you the rise in current or we can put this in the other way, the required inductance is the volt second divided by the current that you want. We can keep this current to about one fourth of the total current that gives right to 20 micro Henry. So, this L naught has to be 20 micro Henry and that will result in a switching loss which is much less instead of 2.4 millijoule it has now dropped to 0 0.053 millijoule, almost 50 times less. In order to provide a suitable uh, dis, uh, suitable freewheeling path here, select this L naught R naught time constant to be much less than the on time that is following. During the on time, this should completely reset. So, L naught R naught time constant must be much less than T on. In this way, it is possible to design a similar turn off circuit which is the blue one. Let us take the uh, switching time for turn off to be 800 nanoseconds. The apparent switching loss is about 4.8 millijoule because the time is double. Now, the loss is also double. Now, we are limiting the rise in voltage by providing this capacitance here and we follow the same process. We allow this rise in voltage to be one fourth of the total voltage. So, this triangle area that you see here is the ampere second that is the coulomb that flows into the capacitor, coulomb charge half of full height 15 into 0.8 microsecond divided by the rise in voltage 100 is the value of capacitance that is 0 0.6 microfarad. Switching loss has reduced almost 50 times, 50 times less. The R naught R f is to be selected now. This is not C naught R naught. This must be C f R f. This has to be much less than the off time. So, from that time constant, it is possible to select this R f value. Okay. Now, probably to summarize, 
Ideal switches have lossless operation, instantaneous switching, four quadrant operation. Real switches, there are several of them, uncontrolled switches, semi-controlled switches, controlled switches which are BJT, MOSFET, IGBT and so on. Most of these are single quadrant switches, but we can connect them in a combination to get multi quadrant operation. The most important non ideality in this switch is the losses and they have to be handled through appropriate thermal design. The devices require protection for diodes and SCRs the protection is through fuse. We find out what is I square T tolerated by the device and what is I square T allowed by the fuse. If the fuse I square T is less than the device I square T then proper protection will take place. But controlled devices can be protected through the driver itself. In case you sense the overcurrent happening because of short circuit, it is possible to switch off the device through the control mechanism. So, that is applicable to BJT, MOSFET, IGBT and so on. And switching transients can give rise to voltages and currents which are much higher than the uh, rated voltages and currents. In such a case, it is necessary to design switching aid circuits, which will help in maintaining the peak voltage and peak current to within safe limits. So, with this, we have got some idea about switches. What are these switches? How are they uh, featured for their ideal performance? What are the real switches? And what are the uh, features of the real switch in comparison with ideal switch? How do you read the data sheets and understand many of the performance features and how do you protect these devices and so on. In one of the uh, future lectures, we will go on to the other devices, inductors, transformers, capacitors and so on. And once all the components are known, then we will see how to put them together for the purpose of power conversion.